I was seeing ghosts, I was seeing stuff, and I would tell my Christian family, like, this is what's happening to me. I'm literally being able to see in the spirit. So that was my childhood. I was seeing all these spiritual things and I didn't understand. And as I said, I was going and telling Christian people what was happening to me and they would just tell me it was my imagination. They they had like no explanation for me. That kind of made me think in my mind, okay, well, my answer is not in the Christian church. I got deeper in LA into stuff. I would really be asked for projecting and doing the manifest station and I was going to the crystal shops on like sunset I was doing all of it just infesting myself with this stuff I got the shower went on YouTube instantly searched Jesus saw hundreds of new age to Jesus testimonies no other stuff came up I didn't know what new age was I started watching these videos for a whole week straight I'm watching them boom boom just all I'm consuming is that and I was literally destroyed it was the truth that I was always looking for I finally got it. I was adopted and I was adopted from birth. So what happened was my parents, my birth parents, they got pregnant with me when they were pretty much high school, you know, probably around homecoming type of thing, like 16, 17 years old. And they obviously, you know, it was the South, it's kind of judgy whenever you get pregnant young, it's kind of like a bad look or whatever. So they were, they were either gonna, you know, do the abortion type of thing or do adoption. And my birth mom was like, yeah, we're doing adoption. Like this is, we're not aborting a child. So my adoptive mom was actually all the way over on the East Coast in Maryland. And my birth family was in the South in Alabama, actually. And so she was actually praying. My adoptive mom was praying on the East Coast. God, she was infertile, so she couldn't have a kid. God, give me, like, please can I have a child? Please can I have a child? She wanted like seven kids and she wasn't even able to have one. So she was pleading with God. And the first time she ever heard God speak audibly to her was when he said to her soon, like soon he's going to give her a child. So ironically, her brother-in-law worked as like a gynecologist in my birth mom's unit. So, mm -hmm. so he met her and was like, okay, you're trying to give your child for adoption. Actually, my sister-in-law is looking to adopt. So he connected them and boom, I get adopted. Pretty wild, <laughs> pretty, just pretty wild how that in itself is a testimony to even people who are wanting to have children and maybe even can't have a child, pray and ask the Lord and he will deliver to you what you're asking, the desire of your heart. He Amen. desires for you to have children. He desires for you to have that family. Amen. So keep seeking him and just even be open to him doing it in a way that you wouldn't expect. Like I said, my mom wanted seven children. She got one but it was, it was what she needed. God gave her what she needed. So, and that's the first time she ever heard his voice. So pretty wild. Mm. That's, that's some glory of God right there for you just to start it off. So then it just gets a little bit strange because when I was growing up, they kind of raised me in the church. So I would get taken to like Sunday school and church on holidays and things like that, but it was a Methodist church and nothing wrong with, you know, different denominations of Christianity. But for me, it was like, I was seeing, I was seeing in the spirit realm, like a lot of children do and they get shut down, but I was seeing like in the spirit realm, like I was seeing ghosts, I was seeing stuff. And I would tell my Christian family, like, this is what's happening to me. I'm literally being able to see in the spirit. And, and, and Lindsay, for people that may be going through that, what exactly, if you could give some examples of what you were seeing as a child. Yeah, so, okay. For example, if, even in my grandma's home, I saw like this, it looked like moving dust. Like it was a dark black type of cloud that just would move, like it'd be in the middle of the night too. It was really scary. <laughs> And I'd be terrified because I didn't know this was a demon. I didn't know I could rebuke it in Jesus name. Do you get what I'm saying? They'd be around like even when I was little looking into my bathroom, I would see like eyes watching me literally from the bathroom watching me. And I'd be like, that's a monster, you know, because kids, that's what you chop it up to. That's a monster. It's like a fictional character. And then your parents will kind of make you feel like, oh, this is just your imagination. Right. But the thing is, you need to be teaching your kid to like how to spiritual warfare. I would feel like, leave my house, the blood. But anyways, so that was my childhood. I was seeing all these spiritual things and I didn't understand. And as I said, I was going and telling Christian people what was happening to me. And they would just tell me it was my imagination. They, they had like no explanation for me. And so that kind of made me think in my mind, okay, well, my answer is not in the Christian church. 
my answer has nothing to do with Christianity because I must be on, I must be a different religion because that's kind of, you're raised like these are the religions and you fit into each one of them or whatever. Right. I was like, I must be a different religion then. So I grew up rejecting Jesus so hard. Like my mom would be like, you're a Christian. And I'd be like, no, I'm not. So adamant. No, I'm not. Don't call me that. It was crazy. I was so like angry just at the fact that my answers weren't getting, there was no answer to my questions. There we go. There was no answer to my questions that I had, even from a child. And on top of that, I also feel like this is kind of what caused me to be in such a depression. Like I was so depressed and mind you, I was adopted. So it wasn't like if I grew up with my birth family, it might've been like a little bit different. Maybe I would have had a couple of reasons to be depressed, but I was adopted by people who genuinely wanted a child. Hmm. So it was like, not like they were abusing me. You know, you have to go through screening to even adopt a child. So it was like, they weren't abusing me. They weren't being rude or crazy to me or anything like that. So really I had no reason to be depressed, but I was just struggling with depression my whole life. Nobody, people would kind of, my family members would kind of be like, what's wrong with you? Why are you depressed? Like not trying to understand. So I feel like I was just always misunderstood, which is neither here nor there, whatever, a lot of people are misunderstood. Yeah, I just had this depression, anxiety, was so shy, really, really like in my shell, kind of feeling like, feeling like an outsider. I think the adoption kind of had something to do with that, right. which I realized when I was older, when I got saved is what I realized. <laughs> but um, that just feeling of rejection, maybe abandonment type of things that just attached to you when you're in that type of situation. So in elementary school, it was like, I started dealing with that, like the depression. I even started thinking about girls. Like I even started thinking about like being attracted to girls. Am I attracted to girls or guys or both or what's wrong with me? I actually remember praying to Jesus when I was seven years old, God, please don't let me be gay because I don't want to be like exiled from my family. I don't want to be um, looked at crazy. I don't want to have that. I just don't want the problems that come with that. Because at that time, when I was seven, I'm 24 now. When I was seven, it wasn't such like an embraced thing. Like it wasn't embraced like it is now. So it was like, you get made fun of. Like you're kind of looked at crazy if you're you were that at that time. Now it's not so much like that. But so yeah, I would be praying to God please don't let me grow up and be gay. Literally, that was my prayer. The prayer was not answered in my mind because I still struggled with those thoughts and feelings. So I'm like, God's not real, bro. Like, if I'm still struggling with this, how is God real? I would just, there were so many things. I would pray little kid prayers, like little, you know, immature prayers, and they wouldn't get answered. I didn't understand spiritual realities. Like I didn't understand like deliverance. I didn't understand spiritual warfare, rebuking stuff, just even being able to have the full armor of God. I didn't understand that. Nobody right. taught me that. We didn't grow up like having Bible studies or reading the Bible. So it was like Jesus, but that's, that's it. Just Jesus. There's nothing. <laughs> Here's Jesus. Hit your knees. If you're sad, that's it. There's no context. So I really didn't know God personally at all. Like there was no relationship that I had with him. So I ended up hating him and mocking him, telling everyone he's a fictional character and you guys are delusional and you're making stuff up. And how can you just live out this fantasy that's not even real? Wow. Like, why do you even go to church? Like I was, I was a little demon. I'm like, <laughs> I was a little demon. I would literally be sitting here mocking your faith to your face. Like, I don't, it wasn't, it was nothing for me to just be like, your God's not real because he's not, he doesn't answer prayers. Like there's all these spiritual things happening and no Christians can give me any answers. So what's, what's the truth? There has to be a truth. So that's when I started looking for the truth. You can't find the truth in what you think is God, Jesus, the church, whatever. You're going to start looking outside the church. So I started searching for the truth. Sixth grade comes around, get into an abusive relationship, have to get a restraining order, start cutting myself. I was like now dealing with suicidal thoughts, tendencies, whatever. I would sleep with a knife under my pillow at the ripe age of 11. It was nuts. Mm. It was so nuts. Like this, the guy was like, cut my initials into your arm. It was actually so crazy. It was crazy. Like the, that is like heightened. This is when the devil straight up started attacking for real because this was like, kill yourself, kill yourself. You'd be better off dead. Like all the, like every single day. 
And mind you, there was no real reason for me to be feeling like this. Like naturally, in the natural realm, there was no reason for me to be feeling like this. So it had to be spiritual. But nobody came to me and prayed for me. They were like, we're going to send you to a boarding school. Mm. I'm like, what is going on? I'm 11. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, I'm 11. Please help. I don't know why I'm going through this. So that just continued just, you know, getting bullied kind of my whole life weird stuff then high school rolls around get into another abusive relationship it's like a pattern type of thing one of the enemy's little cycles, cycles. there yeah. we go one of the one of the cycles was an abu was abusive relationships in my life so he actually started teaching me about astrology ancient egypt all of the things like of new age and the witchcraft stuff he put me on to that i wasn't super into it because i wasn't whatever, but I would meditate. I would put on meditate, guided meditations at 15 and stuff and sit, sit here and try to detach and just have nothing. It was weird. I don't actually know where that came from. I would actually just sit here listening to guided meditations from people telling you to let go, clear your mind, make yourself open. They would make us do yoga actually in high school. It was a class you had to take. Wow. <laughs> they would make, because I went to an arts high school, mm. the Barbara Ingram. They made you do yoga and they're yoking yourself together with ancient, like Eastern, you know, religion demons, teaching how to clear your mind and mind, body, soul, the Kundalini stuff. If y'all are listening and you know what that is, if not, don't mess with it. Just don't mess with it. Don't even go down the rabbit hole, okay? Was kind of dealing with that from young age too and just did dance, did ballet and stuff. So all of that stuff is kind of like intertwined in there. So high school, I started making music after getting out of this relationship. It took me like nine months to get out. It was very abusive, narcissistic, mind control, like witchcraft on my mind type of thing. It took me a long time to get out. It was like every time I was trying to get out, blackmail. I'll do this so you won't be able to ever find someone else. I'll leak this picture. It was bad. Mm -hmm. And so that was keeping me bound in that. But eventually I was like, bro, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm done. Like, I'm done with this. Cut it off. And then it got bad because, you know, I was raped by a guy. This, this, the abusive thing was statutory rape. Lied about his age. I was 15. He was like 23. Wow. Lied about his age though. So that was like statutory rape. Then actually got raped by another guy. That's when it set off the promiscuity in my life. Like I was like not caring about, you know, sex or anything. Nothing was really sacred to me anymore. It was like that um, Jezebelic thing just came over me to where I don't care like... I don't care. This is nothing. It means nothing. But I wasn't taught. I wasn't raised like that at all. My mom was like, don't have sex till you're married. But once you open the door, the door is open now. You don't know what's going to come in. That in combination with all the heartbreak, the depression was still raging. So I turned to music because I was obsessed with music anyway, like secular music. I was always obsessed with it. Now this is when music became something I turned to when I should have turned to God. I would basically be praying to music. Like anytime I'd be sad, I'd be like, get on the mic and literally make depressing songs. That is not gonna literally do anything for anyone except for make them depressed. So I was now perpetuating depression in other people's lives. So this is like kind of how that started. This was when I was 16, I started doing this. Wow. Kept doing it until age 21. It got like worse and stuff with time, like started incorporating the witchcraft stuff and the promiscuity, the lust and things over time. But it started with just depression. Like I'm sad and I need someone to talk to. So I'm going to talk to this mic real quick. I mean, I didn't pray to God. So who was I going to go to? Went to Baphomet, that like God of like the fame and music industry and all that stuff. Went straight there. And with your 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 parents or the people, mm -hmm. well, specifically, let's say your, your parents, mm -hmm. Where were they in, in the midst of all of that? Did they just give up? Did they keep trying or? They didn't give up. They just didn't know what to do with me. Mm. And mind you, I had generational curses from my bloodline, that whole other story, big druggies, you know, bit like real out here with the sexual promiscuity, real, like stuff they didn't deal with, but it, it carried through my bloodline, which people think, oh, that's neither here nor there. It doesn't matter. Like nature versus nurture. So I'm adopted. So I actually know that there is a nature and it comes with the spirit. It's spiritual, you know, like it mm. comes with whatever's running in your bloodline. 
the whole topic of nature versus nurture was always so wild to me because I was like perfect example. Like you can be nurtured into certain things. And then also some things are just, they come with the territory. If you're born into this bloodline and this descendants and all that stuff, you're going to come with some certain stuff, either blessings or curses. Wow. So I had that. Mind you, they were kind of blind to the spirit stuff. They were blind to the spirit realm. So they really didn't understand that. Yeah. They didn't know maybe I should be praying over my kid to break these curses. They didn't know. They know now, but they didn't know then. So I have grace for them. They didn't know. Nobody taught them. They didn't grow up around crazy stuff. So how would they know? So they were just confused. They didn't really know what to do with me. They were trying. I, I was so mean to them. Like I was like, they were my enemy in my mind. Enemy turned me against my family for a long time. Only since coming to Christ is reconciled. Now we're close. <laughs> We talk all the time. We're so close. Like, so then I go to college and things started to get a little bit crazier. The little liking girl thing, I kind of actually took action on it now. I dated someone who was, I thought was a girl, but they were actually transitioning to a boy. So this was 2017 before any of this stuff was kind of like how it is now. This was before any of that was happening. So I, I was dating this person. I was learning so much about this mindset of like the whole LGBT mindset of be open, accepting whatever people, if you're born this way, you are born this way. There is nothing you can do. There's no solid, concrete, objective truth. I got infiltrated with that by this relationship. Call me a boy, but I'm a girl. It's a girl. I thought I was getting into a relationship with a girl and I was cool with that, but then call me a boy. It was, it was so confusing. So mm. confusion entered my mind a lot at this time. Um, you know, just being away from my family who I felt were very strict that I couldn't like, God forbid they find out type of thing. So going to college, it was like, okay, they're not going to be, they're not going to be able to see as much of what I'm doing. Um, amongst with other things, start smoking weed, start drinking. Mind you, I never smoked weed or drank anything until I was 18. Most people, they start real young, but I was terrified of my parents because they were strict. So I didn't. <laughs> My roommate gave it to me and I was like, whatever, I've never tried this. I was terrified, but I did it. And then the first time I had weed, I was high for until I was from 2018 until 2021, I was high. I got high one time from that time until Jesus saved me. It was a stronghold. That's what I was doing. I was smoking like three backwards a day. Like it was intense. It wasn't like the little joints or anything. I was like, give me... Give me whatever will hurt me the most because now all my favorite artists were smoking weed. So I was like, oh, to be an artist, I got to blow down these backwoods. Mm. That's how you get that level of creativity. Mind you, I went to an arts college. So it was everybody. Man, I, did, I never did acid. I never did any hard drug, like any of that. All I ever did was weed. Thank Jesus. He, like I said, sealed me off from certain things. That was enough. Like I was, I was smoking all the time. So it was like the music, the coping with the music and the coping with the weed now became friends. And now that was all I did to cope with this depression. The root of it was depression. If we're being really honest, the root of it was depression, generational curses, trauma, fear, all these different things. It was never like the smoking. That's the issue. It was why are you smoking? What does it do for you? Why are you coming back to it? When you smoke, what does it do? Does it calm you down? Does it give you peace? Does it give you creativity? All these things you're supposed to get from Jesus, right? It's a counterfeit. It's not real peace. The, the high conversations where people make up these philosophies, random philosophies of life, doctrines of devils, being taught while you're in this state of being high. You're high because you're literally messing around in the second heaven when you shouldn't be messing around with demons, getting their doctrines ingrained into you. And you think, oh, I just had this amazing thought when I was high. Mm. This is totally the answer. And mind you, remember, I was looking for the truth. So all these high revelations to me, what if this is the truth? This is making sense. It's adding up. I mean, it's making sense. So so I was just going with it and going with it. I had this whole philosophy. I won't, I won't tell y'all because I remember it, but I won't tell y'all because... No, it's such a doctrine of demons, but it was, it's what I lived by. It was so crazy. It was false. I was living a true false reality. I was completely convinced of a false lie. And now randomly a warlock comes into my life and starts teaching me everything about the stars, astrology, natal charts, visions, literally teaching me all of this, the spiritual gifts, like from, but the, from the kingdom of darkness side, teaching me all summer. It was 2018 summer, teaching me all about everything 
like I kind of turned into a little astrologer, literally, because I would be outside every night, even just looking at the stars before this, because I would pray to the moon. I would be looking at the moon and like think the moon could hear me or we were in tune or something was going on. It was it was wild. And it might sound crazy to some of you, but there's some people out there who still are doing this. So just going to share it um, to maybe set you free. He told me about the crystals, about how when you get this crystal and you put it on yourself, it's going to protect you from negative spirits. Because <laughs> then he taught me that there was such thing as positive and negative spirits. Now you have to learn how to discern, is this a negative spirit or is this a positive spirit? It was just so much confusion hmm. and it was not rooted in truth or fact. So wild, so deep into that. I was smoking with all this new witchcraft stuff available to my mind now was teaching myself to astral project. I would put on my sleep mask and I would literally get high and leave my body. And I would go somewhere. I would literally know how to go to this certain place. And I don't know, maybe the cosmos, it was like the cosmos, how it looked was the cosmos. And I would literally be astral projecting, leaving my body. The enemy himself taught me how to do that. It wasn't the warlock that taught me how to do that. So it's it just shows you how astrology is a gateway drug to other forms of witchcraft. It opens you up to the idea of maybe there's more. Let me go deeper into this. It's People call it a rabbit hole. Right. And it is. It is a rabbit hole. Once you do one thing, you start hearing of all these other theories or whatever, and you start, maybe this is true. Maybe this is true. Mind you, on the whole, I was looking for truth the whole time. I was looking for truth, right? So I'm dabbling in this, dabbling in that, dabbling in Buddhism, dabbling in Hinduism. They actually... I actually took a class on Hinduism in college. It was learning about all the, the Shiva Vishnu and all that. I was learning about all that. And I was like, oh, that's valid. I was down. I was really down. <laughs> like all these different religions, I was down to dabble in them, but I was not really down at this time to dabble in Christianity. That was the one I was like, keep that away from me. Now this is my boundary. <laughs> I'm sure my mom was praying for me and I had a birth great, my birth great grandma was praying for me my whole life. So mm. their prayers really hit the throne room of heaven. Okay. <laughs> because after I get discipled by the warlock, then I get literally invited to a Bible study the fall. So that was summer of 2018. In fall of 2018, these girls come up to me, you want to do a Bible study? I'm like, okay. And where, where was, where at did college, they, at college. Oh, college. Yeah. yeah. So they were like college evangelists or whatever. They were like, do you want to do a Bible study? I'm like, sure. <laughs> I don't know why I said yes. I really don't like knowing what I was doing. I'm not sure how the enemy did not put, say no, don't go. <laughs> I would really pull up too. I would go. I was down to hear them out. They'd be like, read the scripture. And I couldn't read it. My mind would not, I literally could not comprehend scripture. They were like, read this. And I actually couldn't. It looked like a different language to me. So that was very confusing. But when they would explain it, I would supernaturally like, understand these revelations like from the Bible. I just couldn't read the Bible. The enemy had twisted my eyes up. I couldn't actually read it like physically. I couldn't. So that happens. It was like the enemy tried to get me. And then, you know, the Bible study thing came in. Boom. Just It was just now I got a choice kind of in a way. So right in the beginning of 2020, like April, I had this thought come into my head. Read the Bible. I was like, okay, whatever, I'll read the Bible. I don't really, I've never really read it. So let me, let me give it a try. I opened on my phone. I couldn't read it. I'm like, I close my eyes. I go, Jesus, if you're real, open my eyes to read this. I opened my eyes, bro. I could read it instantly. <laughs> I could instantly read it. And I was sobbing. I'm even about to tear up right now because I was sobbing. Because this whole time, a big thing that was keeping me from it was I really couldn't read the Bible. I didn't understand it because I would read it and the words, they looked like gibberish. I couldn't understand. Hmm. It's not just like, oh, she can't read. Like It was like specifically just the Bible. It was English. I was reading an English Bible, trying to read English. And I speak English and I'm fluent in English, so why can I not read this book? It was suspicious. But then Jesus opened my eyes. And it was like, all of the sudden, I under, like I got an understanding. And this understanding mixed with lack of discipleship, lack of community, lack of all of that led to me getting into tarot cards, thinking that God was going to talk to me through these tarot cards. I'm like, oh, I like Jesus now. Let me talk to him. How do I talk to him? Tarot cards must be the way. It was so, so wild. Mm. <laughs> 
So I got myself a little deck deck of tarot cards. I started learning how to do all the formations and all that stuff, and I started learning how to do it. The first time I heard God myself, he said, if you want to get close to me, you have to throw those cards away. I was terrified in my spirit because I, I, like, <laughs> what? And, first and, time. And yeah, t tell us a little bit about that of where were you when you heard that? My like apartment in Boston with my tarot cards. I was just sitting there. I had all my weed. He also prompted me to flush all my weed down the toilet. He was really trying to get me. And I wasn't ready yet. Mostly I didn't know, like I never had a revelation. Like he spoke to me this whole time he was trying to tug at me, but I was, I didn't get a full revelation of what even was happening. Like I thought you could, somebody told me you can mix Christianity with new age and witchcraft stuff and you can mix all these religions and it's fine. Mm. Somebody told me that. So I thought, okay, that's, it's fine. And no, but mind you, nobody ever told me tarot cards or astrology or any of that was witchcraft. So I didn't know. I straight up didn't know. I didn't even know witchcraft, the word witchcraft, I was so unfamiliar with. I, di I didn't even, it wasn't a word in my life. Like some people would be like, oh, you're like a white witch. You're like a good witch. I'd be like, okay, fine. But it wasn't like, oh, studying the book of, you know, it wasn't like that. So it was confusing. My my Christian family didn't tell me it was witchcraft. My The couple, very few f Christian friends that I had never told me it was. So I didn't think there was anything really wrong with it. I, d I just thought everyone had their own choice. So anyways, Jesus told me, if you want to get close to me, throw those cards away. <laughs> I threw them away instantly. Hmm. I was like, buy cards. I threw them out. And, but I would still watch the little tarot card videos. I was like, okay, if I'm not, if I'm not doing it myself, maybe it's fine. Cause I was looking for the truth. I was looking for answers. I was looking for guidance, direction, wanted to know what was happening. Didn't know I could just go to Jesus. Mind you, I didn't even know how to pray. I, I didn't know how to pray at all. So <laughs> prayer wasn't an option. Anyway, fast forward, that was 2020 April and throughout the whole summer, all that was happening. And then in the fall of 2020, I moved to LA to work in the music industry. That was my goal. It was, it was my goal to just do music. I just always only wanted to do music, not realizing that it was literally a glorified coping skill for me. Do I still love music and do I still make music? Yeah, I'll still make music here and there, but I don't, like, I pray now, bro. Like, if I'm making a song, it's like trying to encourage and edify somebody to come to Jesus or like in their relationship that they already have with him. But it's like back then it was all about like fame and just just demonic stuff. Fame is not good for people and people will crave it and desire it. Go there, start working in the industry. And it was very like now the Lord himself was allowing me to see what I always wanted face to face. He was allowing me to see the big artists. He was allowing me to work with some of them. He was allowing me to go to the mansions, go and see the life that I wanted. He was allowing me to see it. And it was very, I was always like a spiritual person. So I was never like wrapped up in, oh my gosh, I love the money and I love the fame and I love all this stuff, the material stuff. I was never like that. I was always observing like, who are these people for real? Like I was always looking like, you're a big artist, but who are you for real? Like, are you a person? Who are you? So it was very, I was very like introspective with it. I was around people and I wasn't like phased really by it. I was trying to see how the spirit realm fit into all this. Mm. Cause mind you, I was like pretty much a witch. I was a witch. So I was like seeing just what was going on. Like it was like, he was really allowing me to see. I was still doing all the, I got deeper in LA into stuff. I would really be astral projecting and doing the manifestation and be doing all this stuff. Like the Palo Santos, the sage, the crystals. I'd be putting those crystals all up and down my little, bring me peace, bring me love, bring me. It was so weird. I mean, it's a rock. I'm sorry. It's a rock. I'm so sorry. I really don't want to burst your bubble, but it is a rock. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have a heartbeat. doesn't have a mind. It's a rock. Anyways, I was doing, I was so, and I was going to the crystal shops. I was going to that one. I forget what it was called, but I was going to the crystal shops on like sunset. I was doing all of it, just infesting myself with this stuff up until I started dating a Christian, Christian, grew up a Christian, cross necklace, Christian, just cross necklace, just a cross necklace. That, that's it. So, but I, he was like watching me read the Bible. He's like, you read the Bible? I was like, yeah, I mean, I read the Bible sometimes. Yeah. Just in sessions, I would pull up the Bible. It would be so weird. Like the Holy Spirit was really, he was really around me. He wasn't in me yet, but he was around me. Um, he was like, I was reading the Bible. At this, now when I dated this guy, I started to pray to Jesus. Cause I was like, oh Jesus, help me be a good girlfriend. Jesus was like, <laughs> okay, I don't know about that, but 
I'm about to save you now, girls. So literally from me giving the open door, from me praying, he spoke to me, astrology is not in the Bible. Just like throw the cards away. He spoke to me, astrology is not in the Bible. I knew it was Jesus instantly, but this time it was different because I was praying and he spoke back. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So Mm -hmm. I got out of the, I was in the shower, this happened. I got out of the shower, went on YouTube instantly, searched Jesus, saw hundreds of new age to Jesus testimonies. No other stuff came up. No sermons came up. I think maybe Isaiah Saldivar came up, like a spiritual warfare thing. I was like, I don't know what that really is right now. I'm just, what is this new age to Jesus? What is new age? I didn't know what new age was. Mm. (laughs) I had no clue what new age was. I started watching these videos for a whole week straight. I'm watching them, boom, boom. Just all I'm consuming is that. And I was literally destroyed. Just to be quite honest, I was very much destroyed. Like every single thing that I built my life on was torn down in that moment. I threw everything. I mean, the spiritual books, I had all these witchcraft books. They were, they were witchcraft books. People were trying to teach you how to control and manipulate energy. It was so disgusting. So I threw all those away, threw all the crystals away, all the Palo Santos, the sage. I threw every, all the, I wrote my natal chart out. I wrote all of the best days for um, the week of astrology wise. Like what's the best day to do this or best day to do this based on the alignment of the stars. Threw it all away, threw everything out. And I mean, it was a lot. I threw my weed away. I was done with weed. I flushed that. I was done with that again. This happened a couple of times. The Lord was really not trying to have me smoke weed, but I was like, oh, but I like it. It helps me write music. <laughs> I was completely transformed very quickly. And I was very loud about it. And so it was like, I'm telling everybody, cause I would teach everybody pretty much about, I would post all the new age stuff, the astrology stuff. I go, everybody, that's demonic. What I was teaching you guys, what I was posting was actually the devil. Mm. It now, was not God. Now, Lindsay, what, what was it about the, the testimony that you saw that impacted you so much? It was the truth that I was always looking for. I finally got it. <laughs> it's not nuts. <laughs> like literally, literally the truth I was always looking for was there. Like, like, you know, when like your spirit just kind of knows <laughs> it was like, bro, this is everything I was looking for. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. <laughs> like, I was like, I was persecuting this Jesus guy the whole time. I was telling people he was fake. He pulled up on me. <laughs> he pulled up on me. And I was like, you're real. You're actually real. (laughs) I was literally wilding out. Like I was like sobbing, but so bad for days, like three days straight, I was sobbing. And I was like, I just repent, like, I just repent for like doing this witchcraft stuff. Like I didn't even know it was witchcraft. I just repent, like, I'm sorry I did this to you. I was like repenting crazy, crying. Like my eyes were swollen. Like I'm crying right now. My eyes were swollen. Like Mm. it looked like I got hit. (laughs) I was just crying so hard because I was like, Jesus, you're real. I didn't think you were real this whole time. And now you're so real to me now. Anyways, then like a week later, I give my life to him straight up. Give my life to him. It took me a minute. I was like, I need to like, what is all, what is going on? So it took me a minute. I was like, let me just watch these videos and figure out what I'm about to do. Because if I follow Jesus, I have to stop everything. Like instantly I knew, like, I can't just keep making this crazy music. I can't just keep sleeping with my boyfriend. I can't just keep doing the witchcraft. I can't just keep being in the music industry. Where is this going to lead me? Because I was literally about to like sell my soul. Like it was like that. I was like down to be a little bit naked, naked on the camera. I was like, whatever. Like if I have to wear a little bit less clothes to be an artist, that's cool. Mm. So it was like, oh my gosh, Jesus, I'm about to, if I really give my life to you, like everything I've worked for six, seven years for it, I have to, I have to leave it all. It was a hard decision because he was also telling me to leave L.A. And I did not want to leave L.A. So it was it was like everything. I did not want to go back to my parents' house, bad relationship with them. I cut them off. The enemy had a wedge between us. I was like, if I really follow you, I really have to sacrifice everything. I really have to leave everything and follow you. I just I didn't even read the scripture. I just knew if I follow you, I have to pick up my cross, lose every friend I have, lose the boyfriend that I love so much, lose the music, lose every connection I've ever made to get me further in the music. I have to lose all of it. And when it came to it, I was fine with that. Why? Because I had the truth. (laughs) 
then like the day I was, I was like, I was like, nothing will ever take my peace again. Bro, I tell you, 20 minutes later, my mom called me and was like, your dad is being taken to the hospital, 107 degree fever. He's pretty much going to die. Like, I'm like, the devil. <laughs> Instantly, mind you, I just got saved. I'm like, give me a second, Jesus. <laughs> but instantly I knew either either I'm literally going to pray or my dad is dead, bro. Like, it's two options. Like, the thought into my mind, either you're going to pray or you're going to lose him. So I prayed. And he came back to life in three days. Wow. And they didn't really know what happened to him. They were like, you got blood poisoning. They didn't know what happened to him. And when he was fine, they were like, how are you fine? You should be dead. I was like, Jesus, you saved my dad. And my faith was so crazy to where the first, I was praying for four hours straight and I had never really prayed that much. The first like hour when I was praying, I felt the enemy's hands loose off of him. And I said to my mom, he's going to live. And he lived. That was so traumatic. Like that was traumatic low key. So uh, the Lord was like, leave LA. And he kind of used this as the catalyst to get me to leave. So I left. And went back with them, reconciled the whole relationship. We are literally so close now. Without Jesus, that would have never happened. I probably would have cut them off forever. He reconciled my adoptive parents and me. He reconciled my birth parents and me. I never talked to my birth dad before. Turns out he got born again one year before I got born again. He was praying to break the curses. Wow. And they broke. He's on fire for Jesus. My birth mom is literally on her way to being born again as well. She talks to me about Jesus now. She never used to do that. She taught me about witchcraft too. My birth mom did. She told me she read my natal chart when I was born and already knew what I was going to be like because she read my natal chart. He reconciled those all four of those relationships. He literally gave me a husband in one year. When I was not saved, I was cool with having 10 men in rotation my entire life never getting married, never having kids, hated the idea of being with one person. I was not monogamous. That's a whole other story. People, when I was young, tried to get me into a polygamous relationship and that spirit attached to me. I was never cool with just having one person. Gave me a husband. Crazy. My husband has sharpened me so much in Christ. He's literally made me a better woman of God. Like I, Honestly, I was saved, born again on fire, but I was not a woman of God until I was married. Because I was still like, my character was not there. I was, I was just still like kind of secluded. Like I was not trying to be in fellowship really. Like I was doubt, like, mind you also, I lost every friend when I got saved. I was on the floor. This is for Jesus's glory right here. This is, this is the height for Jesus' glory. I was on the floor in my room where I never wanted to be again in my parents' house, crying to Jesus, Jesus, I lost everyone. You're the only person I have now only person. And I will never forget that you were literally the only person there for me when everyone else left. And he was like, I'm going to I'm going to restore and replace every relationship that you lost. And I waited for the promise and it came to pass. Huh. I have so many sisters in Christ now, closest friends I've ever, ever, ever had. I know they fight for me in the spirit. They love me. And I never had, I had friends cut me off, um, go behind my back, just ghost me, best friends, leave me. Crazy, I would be so traumatized, like from people like leaving, abandonment, just that spirit from a dot, like kept coming in different ways, like guys breaking up, friends leaving. Jesus stopped that. He stopped it in its tracks. Loyal friends, loyal husband. I don't, I've never worked, like, I don't have to worry about my husband at all. Some people can't say the same. I'm blessed. My husband is so, he's solid. He's a man of God. Literally, he's done so, like, since being saved, he has delivered me. I didn't even tell y'all about the deliverance. He cast so many demons out of me, bro, that were keeping me bound to the point. This is crazy for his glory, too. I'm sorry. I'm going over time. This is crazy, too, and I've not shared this, like, publicly, but I... My friend was like, you know what? Even if it makes men a little bit queasy or whatever, it's weird for them. I'm going to share it because it's a testimony. It's, he healed me from endometriosis. I used to have period cramps so bad that I would pretty much pass out. Like, it was so intense. I'd be screaming. I couldn't even do my remote job from home. It was that bad. I was. So, this was from age 9 to age 21, constantly. I would put little water bottles in my pants. Cause I like my little, I would put water bottles there to like try and make the pain less. 
because hmm. it was so bad. Like medicine couldn't help. It was to the point I was passing out type of thing. Like it was really bad. That first week I got saved, Jesus supernaturally delivered me of like 26 demons in my room. One of them was sexual immorality. When that thing came out, I heard zaps, like in the spirit, audible zap in the spirit. I don't know. I heard zaps like a taser on my ovaries or whatever. I have not had cramps since it has been two and a half years. Wow. I was about to get surgery for endometriosis in the LA hospital down the street. I was about to get surgery to get like whatever it was going on fixed. Jesus healed it. I didn't ask him. I didn't know I could ask him that. One week saved. I didn't know I could ask you for healing. You saw my need and you met it. That's who he is. He's a need meter. He's literally, he's above and beyond. <laughs> like, you're asking him for deliverance. He's like, I'll do that, but it's going to lead to something else. I'm going to bless you in multiple ways. I'm not just going to deliver you. I'm going to heal you. Like, it was so wild. I still can't believe every, and I think he did it because now every single month, you know, women, we have our period every month. Every single month is a reminder. You healed me. Wow. Every month. And it's been two and a half years. I'm like, every month? Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Because I was struggling. I would be, man, you don't even know. Jesus has done so much. Like, I cry because it is insane. I can't believe it. I had no plan B for my life. What the heck? It was like music or nothing. He's brought my husband and I businesses. Like he's brought me like into a into school again, like for real estate. So I'm like, this wasn't my plan for my life. I only had mu music was my only plan, Lord. Everything else you've done. This was your plan is now coming to pass. That I didn't know was, I didn't know was a thing. The world. <laughs> hmm. So he's done above and beyond. I cannot imagine life without him. Literally. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Lindsay, who is Jesus to you? Honestly, I'm still trying to figure him out fully. He is so deep. <laughs> There's so many facets to him. Like, I can't even sit here and be like, I know everything about Jesus. I know what the Bible tells me. I know what I've experienced to him. I know how I talk to him. I know when he answers my prayers. I know that about Jesus. It says we prophesy in part, but at some point, it's going to all be revealed to us. I'm like, I know you, but I know there's so much more to you that I don't know. And most importantly, I'm just happy. Like, you can know me. Now, I can wait to know everything about you. But for now, you know me. And we know each other in this way. And <laughs> we'll be good. So, Jesus, there's not even a word. There's not a word that I can, that I have. Like, people be, oh, my Lord and Savior. That's very obvious in my life. I mean, you see the little, I was going down a rough patch. I was going to get a little face tattoo. It was a rough patch. <laughs> mm. He's my Lord and Savior, obviously. That's baseline. He's more to me than just that. Like, I talk to him about everything. I see him move in so many ways. I see miracles pretty much, I would say daily. I, I would say I literally see miracles, like, daily. From little to big. I see them daily. He has so much grace, so much mercy, so much love and compassion. He wants to save literally as many people as humanly possible. I don't have a word for who he is to me. He's, he's God. I mean, he's the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. He proved himself to be the truth to me. So many things popped off whenever I got saved that he proved himself. I said, Jesus, I believe you. <laughs> Please, I'm seeing all these things happen. I believe that you are who you say you are. <laughs> Mm. The, the spiritual things coming into the physical, it's kind of a little bit a lot right now. I believe you. <laughs> you are the truth. And I found the truth. You Actually, the truth found me. I didn't find the truth. I really wasn't looking for the truth in Jesus, but he is the truth. You can't, like, mm. when you're looking for the truth, you're going to find Jesus. At the end of your journey, Jesus will be there. And you're going to be like, why did I waste so much time? You know why? Because it's your testimony. Amen. That's why. Lindsay, for, for those who are watching and uh, are are hearing your testimony, and just like how you heard a testimony and were deeply impacted, mm -hmm. you know, and they're hearing you and they're saying, man, I'm, I'm relating to what she's saying. I'm there right now. Mm -hmm. Could you just give a word of encouragement to those who are, are in that place right now and are watching you? Mm -hmm. Well, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you will have your way. I pray whatever room these people are in right now, 
Um, anybody that is under the sound of my voice, I pray, Holy Spirit, have your way in their life. Just have your complete, total way. That's really what I would say, because honestly, I think from what I've said, it's undeniable. So at this point, you have a decision to make. Hmm. Holy Spirit, have your way. Uh, Lindsay, could you pray for those who are watching and are ready to receive Jesus into their life? Yes, I will pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for the eyes and ears of their understanding to just be opened even right now. Father, I pray that any questions that they've had that they need answered, I pray that this will be the answer to all of their questions. And I pray that you will further answer every question they could ever have, Father. You know that we have questions. We have questions about this reality that we're in. We have questions about everything that's going on around us. Father, I pray that they will ask you, they will ask you their questions in Jesus' name. I pray that you will supernaturally answer them, intercept the questions before the enemy can twist things around in their mind to confuse them. Father, give them the truth. Father, I pray that they will open your word. Even if they've never opened the Bible before, I pray that they will just open the Bible in Jesus' name, find the truth, literally seek and they will find Father in Jesus' name. I pray for a supernatural grace as well a quickness to come upon their their spiritual walk and their spiritual journey. I pray that you will uproot everything that they have planted or that has just been planted from friends, family, the enemy himself. I, I uproot it now in Jesus' name. I pray that you will replace that with the, with the seed of faith. Father, even just a mustard seed of faith is all you really need to work with. I pray that you'll just plant a mustard seed of faith in this person's life, Father, in Jesus' name. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. I pray against any backlash that they could receive from watching this video, from hearing the truth, from the, the lies of the devil being exposed for really what they are. I pray, Jesus, that you will be everything that they need you to be for them in their life. I pray that you will be above and beyond just their Lord and Savior. Have Lord and Savior be the base level. Have being their Savior be the beginning of their relationship. Father, I pray that you will build relationships with every single person that you've drawn to Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will just have your way in their life. Build a relationship with them. Have Build the trust with them that they can trust you, that they can put their faith in you forever and ever, though, every single day of their life, that they can put their faith and trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I just pray that you will have grace and mercy over your life too, that even if you've messed up and done wrong, that you will be forgiven speedily. I pray you will repent if you if you need to, and I pray that the Lord will just forgive you speedily and you will be able to have a new start in Jesus' mighty name. Lindsay, any last words for the people who are watching your testimony right now? That's it. I've said a lot. Um, I mean, Jesus loves you. How I know this, he died on the cross for your sins. Um, he literally didn't have to do that. He went through everything you went through on this earth to the highest level of temptation, and he didn't sin. He was sent by the Father literally to, a, to accomplish an assignment, just like all of us have assignments. He sent Jesus on an assignment to be an atonement for all of our sins, an eternal atonement to, to literally create a new covenant with humanity. And all you have to do is literally just put your faith in Jesus, repent of your sins, pick up your cross, die daily, follow him. One thing I say about Jesus is Jesus is free. All this crazy new age stuff, the crystals, the books, all this, that stuff, that costs a lot of money. You could easily be down like thousands doing all that. With Jesus, all you need to do is pray. Prayer is free, okay? Jesus literally made this salvation free for you. He paid every single debt that you had against God so that all you have to do is believe in him and you will literally be saved. It says in the Bible, like, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. You don't have to do some weird ritual. You don't have to do any of that. Just believe in Jesus. He's really, he really loves you and he's really that simple. He didn't want to overcomplicate it for you guys. Right. So. 